Hey, 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 happy day 885 of What's She Up To Now. Sharon Hornellstrom here, and I'm talking about progress and holding the fort. I love the idiom and the expression, hold the fort, probably because I've used it literally thousands of times with playing, and playing with my granddaughter, playing with my kids, in my business, every time I would leave, if I would leave for, to go to the bank or go get lunch or go do something or go to the store or or leave at the end of the day before other people or go to a meeting, I would always say, hey, hold the fort to, you know, somebody, at least one person I would say hold the fort to. And I knew, sorry about that, I knew my alarm was going to go off, but I, I started recording anyway so I could get my recording done today. Today... <clears throat> coming up on the 4th of July celebration of our history here in America and our birthday here in America and I hope it's an awesome time of celebration for each and every one of you I know that many of us are coming out of COVID and there's been so much craziness at least here in the United States that uh, <clears throat> I think it's going to be a fun celebration some families are coming together in little smaller groups we're doing some things but you know some of the big things that we normally do are, are on hold or we're not doing I think even Minnesota canceled their state fair. I was talking to my sister about that yesterday. And I'm like, didn't they cancel the state fair this year for the first time in like a hundred and how many ever years? So things are continuing to change and be different, but we need to hold the fort. We need to hold to our traditions when possible, right? We need to do the things that feel good to us. Um, holding the fort means to be responsible for something in someone else's absence. You know, I, I'm a huge believer and advocate of taking 100% responsibility for ourselves and our actions, the things that we say and do. You know what? We're all human beings. Sometimes we say the wrong thing. Have I ever been an absolute heinous bitch to another human being? Yes. Am I ashamed of that? Yeah, of course. But guess what? It's in the past and I, I choose not to participate or be that person anymore. So we need to be responsible for ourselves. And, and the way we act, the way we behave. We need to be able to look in the mirror and say, yep, I did that, I said that, boy, what an ass I was. Or be able to say to someone else, hey, I'm sorry. There's so much crap going on in the world right now that is unacceptable. And it, sometimes we feel like it's everybody and that it's so out of control. Yet we need to really remind ourselves and remember, it's just a small percent of the people on this planet, of the population that's trying to control and manipulate and harm others, right? And, and I don't know why. I can't even pretend to understand their motivation <clears throat> or the reason people behave that way. I, I try to be empathetic, but <clears throat> I don't want to be empathetic with people that advocate violence, people that advocate harming anyone else for any reason. There is no justification. Two wrongs do not make a right. And you can you know, yell at me till I'm blue in the face and you're blue in the face and I'm not going to believe that evil is ever gonna win and triumph over good. And I believe that the vast majority of people on this planet are amazing, absolutely fabulous human beings. Does it mean that evil doesn't exist and there aren't bad people out there doing bad things? No, it absolutely does mean it, it does exist because we live in a dual universe and, and that means that both things exist in order for anything to exist. Everything has to exist. So <clears throat> getting off on a tangent about it's got nothing to do with holding the fort. I think it means hold, hold space for yourself and be responsible. Take 100% responsibility for what you do, what you say, and how you act and behave. And if, if you feel at all bad or negative about how you behave or what you say, guess what? That behavior or what you said wasn't right for you. Um, and so then just stop doing it, right? <laughs> stop being a jerk if you're being a jerk. Sometimes I'll comment on something. Social media goes crazy, especially it seems like whenever there's a presidential election year. People go absolutely half cock crazy and they behave and treat one another in ways that they would never treat one another otherwise. You know, it's like Little civil wars within families and friendships are broken over a political campaign. It makes no sense to me. You know what? I don't care what people believe about politics, religion, sexual orientation, anything else that people can get riled up about. I don't care what you believe about that. And you shouldn't care what I believe about that. There's certain core values and beliefs that we hold dear that 
we don't have to change our mind on. We get to believe what we want to believe. But that means tolerating and letting other people have their beliefs too, right? So, off on my tangent. Day 31 of the Get Up and Go Challenge today, all about progress, making progress in our soap model. P is for progress. So we're talking about progress and how do we make progress. I'm going through the soap model. There's seven main areas of our life and I'm doing emotional. It's the P for emotional for me this time. And next week, or the next time through, I'm going to do, I think I was spiritual I'm gonna do next, which is again, it's a tough one to talk about, not for me personally, but because we all get to have our own point of view. We all get to have our own beliefs and thoughts and feelings and opinions about things like religion. And those are for us to own. It's not for me or you or anyone else to convince anyone else to believe and think and feel like we do. Because guess what? They can't, right? Only you are here to experience your life as you uniquely can. And that's what everybody else is here to do too, right? You know, we feel like COVID is the first time that we've all been in a situation outside of our control simultaneously. And, and for the most part, it, it is one of those few things in our life. But we forget that whatever we're going through, no matter how far-fetched or unique or strange or unlikely it seems, with the internet, we are now connected to billions of people on the planet, right? And that means we are never the only person going through anything. And if we need help and support, we can always find people to help us with that. We can always find people that are going through the exact same thing as we are. But COVID has been this unique and strange situation where billions of people are going through the same root cause situation at the same time. And so it's, it's a unique time in history. And I hope that we're doing studies and we're paying attention and we're looking at the impact that it's having on humanity, not just on a country here or a country there, but on humanity as a whole. I gotta tell you, I'm kind of ashamed of America and the United States in some of the ways that we are responding individually and collectively. And guess what? We're all having our little puppet strings pulled by certain individuals and certain entities that want to control and use this as an opportunity to F us up and take over the world. And it's not gonna happen. Anyway, there I am opinionated and, and postulating, but uh, because and the reason I know with 100% certainty it's not going to happen is because I know that there are a lot more intelligent, amazing people on the planet, human beings, and that includes America especially, that can think for themselves and make their own decisions. And no matter how violent or obnoxious or loud or ridiculous or manipulative a certain or certain entities try to be, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Not in America. So... I'm confident in that. I hope you are as well. Uh, fun challenge today was all about your top five favorite foods. And it's hard. Isn't it hard to just pick five favorite foods? I'm like, okay, what are my top five favorite foods? And then you get to thinking about it. And then you're like, well, I like this. And I like that. I love this. I love that. And so what are your top five favorite foods? It seems like an easy, fun exercise. But it's kind of, it's kind of hard. Except for my number one favorite food is always going to be caramel. Something with caramel in it. Sea salt caramels are my current favorite, but salt's not that good for me, so I'm backing off on that, but I do like my caramels. Uh, so getting ready for the 4th of July. It's an amazing holiday here in America. We're celebrating our, I don't even remember how many, what, 4th of July, 1776 to 2020. How many years is that? So I was thinking about the bicentennial today. I don't know why, but uh, I, I obviously was alive for the bicentennial and it was a really fun celebration. I did. Remember, my dad bought a whole bunch of these bicentennial plates. We had boxes and boxes of these bicentennial plates that we ended up giving away at the 4th of July for like the next decade. Because um, I don't know why he got them. I, I'm not sure why he got them or why he thought it was a good idea, but we had all these bicentennial tray plate type things that were fun. I probably, I don't think I have one anymore, even in storage, but uh, I still remember those. <laughs> But I love the 4th of July. 4th of July is a fun, fun holiday. And who doesn't want to celebrate their birthday, right? So Americans, pull together. Let's let's get our, our heads where they belong, start thinking for ourselves, and really remember what America stands for. Instead of trying to destroy our own country from the inside out, let's go ahead and stand strong and stand together and know who it is we really are and what we really stand. All right, that's it. That's all I've got today. I've got some work to do before my amazing little granddaughter shows up. So have a great day. If I can help you anyway, hit me up in the comments below. 
Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow as I'm supposed to be discussing what I'm doing as I transition from the offline world to the brick and mortar world. But obviously, I'm doing challenges right now. That's my main area of focus. And I'm working with some teams to, to create their own challenges, but also to do other things and other projects in the online world because that's my new world, I guess. It's definitely my new world. All right. Have an amazing day. And I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.